Thank you for the kind introduction, Professor Johan. Um, yeah, actually, I, I've had a lot of students ask for uh, Johan, Professor Johan, and I'm really not sure nowadays whether it's me, uh, whether it's you, whether it's Professor Nico, who also shares a similar name. Uh, but in any case, yeah, I'm the, I'm the uh, young, inexperienced uh, professor. <laughs> uh, great to have you guys. Actually, this, uh, um, I would say that playing on stage, playing music and everything on stage, I usually play it to like big crowds that I can't see. So the fact that I can see you guys here right now, it really, really shakes me to the bones. I, I've uh, had my students, you know, do presentations every semester, and now I just realize what they go through uh, once again. Uh, so in any case, today, I want to talk about music in life, but don't get me wrong, I'm not really going to be rocking out on this guitar or anything today. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, if you want that, I, I have a guitar field office, so uh, that. But today, actually, I kind of want to talk about something a little bit different. And before I start into that, I want to kind of ask you guys a question. To you, what is music? Think hard. Yeah. Professor Nico? Emotion. Emotion? Yeah. Professor Yuan? Language of the soul. Language of the soul. So, so. Of the soul. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I major in linguistics and we study languages, but we don't actually speak many languages. Unlike, yeah, honestly, I speak English, I speak Korean, and I speak Saturi. That's, that's about it. Um, but personally, I think music is another way to express yourself. So, let's see if this works. Wow. 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 Technology. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Okay, one, so. One more time. One more time. We're back. Whoa. All right. There we go. I'm using my guitar. Oh, actually, I just taped my cell phone to the uh, guitar. Hey. <laughs> it would be cool, right? Okay, so um, basically as a guitarist, we tend to see music as a combination of what are called of course, notes. Notes are kind of like, these are notes, right? This is a scale actually. Now these notes, very simply, they combine and become what? Not quite, it's hard to see. Chords. Yeah. That's all I have. Chords here. Alright, chords. And the chords combine to become what is called a chord progression. It's a, a link between chords, right? Kind of like if you think of language, the uh, individual notes, if I don't mess them up, are the letters and the words are the chords and the chord progression, of course. Is uh, the art of the sentences and the paragraphs and so on. All right. Now every every song, no matter what song you listen to, they have a chord progression. Like for example, I don't know if you guys know this song. This is a Hotel California by Eagles. It kind of goes like. And 
finally, some of you guys might know ACDC, back in black. Very simple. E. That's it. That's it. Alright, now the reason why I want to talk about all these. All these chord progressions, they're basically a story. Um, they're a story of, well, related to the song, of course, story of the band, right? So I started thinking, I was like, you know what? When, uh, when, when I was told, you know, uh, you should try this pop talk, I was like, how would I make a presentation, like, a, you know, an uninspiring presentation about simply music? Like, would I talk about the nature of the guitar? Uh, the wood that it's made from, and you know, all, all that technical stuff. Would I talk about my crazy times playing rock and roll and such like that? Well, I don't know, it didn't really seem very inspirational. So I started thinking, why not express my life through chord progressions? So today I want to tell you, I, I made kind of a chord progression based on the stages in my life and things that were very important in my life. The first chord I want to start with talking about my life is C major. Sounds like this. Right? Alright, now I have a question for you guys. When you hear this chord, what comes to mind? What kind of feeling? Peace. That's a good one. Peace. Order. Okay. For me, the C stands for comfort. Uh, this is basically how my life began. Actually, uh, by all accounts, I shouldn't have had really a comfortable life. It should have been C for complicated. Uh, because I grew up between two cultures. This over here actually. Slide one back. One back. This is my father. As you can see I get my hair from him. <laughs> um, it has since disappeared. But he still remains the same person to me. Uh, my father was born in Michigan, Petoskey, Michigan. We have more, uh, let's say, it's a very peaceful place. It's a complete countryside. We have more animals and trees there than people. So uh, I'm not much of a city person. Um, but my, tra my father enjoyed traveling very much when he was younger. And he traveled to all different kinds of places. All over, like uh, Greece was one of the places he stayed at for a long period of time. And later on, he, uh, he said, hey, I want to go to the opposite side of the world from where I am right now. And uh, at the time, he went to a church. And the pastor of the church, a, a man who was by the name of uh, Reverend Raymond Provost, just Raymond, uh, he, was not, he was a pastor at that church, and also he happened to be a high school principal here in Korea at the time. And he was, of course, a Western fellow. He was in his 60s at the time. And he suggested to my father, why don't you come over to Korea? My father was like, oh, Korea? What kind of a country is that? He had really, you know, nobody really knows about that much about Korea in America, actually. Nobody knows about anywhere outside the U.S. in America, actually. Or outside of our own state. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my, my uh, first... Uh, when I was growing up in the States, I, I would tell you know, my friends, uh, I'm from Korea. And they would ask me, oh, where's Korea? Is that, is that, is that like China? And I'd be like, oh, it's kind of close by. And about five years later, same question. This time, oh, Korea, north or south? And of course, I'd say north. And yeah, I escaped from the north and stuff like that, right? Um, but yeah, going back. Raymond said, okay, well, before you come to Korea, I'm going to introduce to you one of our teachers as a pen pal, so you learn a little bit about Korean culture. And, of course, that pen pal turned out to be my mother. And uh, 
My mother, in her letter to my father, she sent her picture along with it. And my father, upon seeing her picture, uh, decided I'm going to marry that woman. Yeah, and uh, spoiler, they got married. Um, but, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, my mother, on the other hand, she did not receive a picture from my father. I don't know why. But she thought, because it was Raymond's friend, he said it was his friend. By Korean culture, of course, you know, if you call somebody your friend, you got to be a similar age, right? So she thought it was a guy in his, maybe in his 50s or 60s. So when she saw my father, she was quite surprised. Anyway. Uh, my parents got married three times. The first time they got married, it was in Korea. It was a Western wedding in Korea. The second time was in America. It was a Western type wedding in America. And finally, wearing traditional Korean clothes in the States, in a church. And with the rest of my family. And uh, later on, of course, I'm just gonna skip here. I was born, and uh, I I don't really like showing baby pictures, so I'm just gonna kind of skip. Things here. <laughs> uh, there's actually one thing that I want to show you here. In the back, this is when I was 100 days, not years, 100 days old. Uh, I had a big year, which is basically you know celebrating 100 days of being on Earth. And uh, the person who drew, well, wrote the calligraphy on that sign is somebody who defined my childhood. Can you guess? He was actually on the previous slide. Yeah, you got it right. My grandfather. Ah, uh, of course, on this side. My grandfather defined the sea in my life, the comfort. Also the creativity as well in the sea. He was a big fan of the bow tie. He always wore a bow tie. So did I. He actually taught me how to tie on a tie and everything. So I'd always wear a bow tie. My father wore a straight tie, but I was like, nah, bow ties are cooler. James Bond wears those. <laughs> So yeah, I, I absolutely, absolutely admired my grandfather so much. He was very, very, very precious to me. And I think I was precious to him as well. So yeah, he was pretty much my childhood. Um, just briefly talk about my grandfather. He was a World War II veteran. Same uh, back during the war. And he's actually half Indian, half uh, American Indian. So that's why he has a little bit of Native American. Native American. Yeah, absolutely. And so that would make me one eighth, which means really nothing. And uh, during the war, that was my grandmother, they met. And upon returning from the war, they got married. This is my family over here. Wearing the sailor outfit is my dad. My grandfather gave me lots and lots of creativity because he was a very creative person. First of all, he liked to skydive. Um, he made, he drew the Duvernay on his own helmet up there, as you can see. He made his own parachute. And that's my father in the center holding it. And also, he really enjoyed doodling, just drawing random things. He, he would always have like a napkin or a piece of paper on the side and just constantly be doodling. And finally, he's the reason I started playing music. Um, actually, no. Down to the proper. My grandfather was a big fan of the harmonica. And this is the harmonica he gave to me on my 17th birthday. This was his harmonica, actually. Um, originally, I, I didn't realize what an awesome instrument the harmonica was, but I started playing in a rock band. And actually, there are many uses for the harmonica. 
So a couple of the songs that I wrote, they have this harmonica in them. So then we go on into the next chord I want to talk about, A minor. your mind when you hear this sound. easier in the long run, I guess. Um, you'll be able to do the things that you want, and so on and so on. I really didn't want to go. My friends were all going to middle school, and I wanted to join them, of course. And it was, it was during this time that I decided, okay, you know what? I'll give it a shot, and if I fail the exam, I'll go a semester later to middle school, and then I'll just be like a normal, regular person. Well, needless to say, I, I ended up passing that exam, and it's thanks to my mother, who was a high school teacher. Uh, I, I was finishing like one book a day, basically. I don't know how I did that. I couldn't do that now, ever. But it was the hardest point in my life, honestly. And there's one person who really helped me through that. It was my father. Here he is uh, teaching me how to use PowerPoint. Uh, but <laughs> uh, in that case, my father, he was one person who helped me to survive that point in my life. Whenever I was just really stressed out with work and, you know, just uh, generally depressed, um, he would take me out to different places. For example, one of the hobbies that we share is archery. My dad is really big into archery. Um, Together we've been shooting bows for, well, we're shooting arrows actually from bows for, let's see, a really, really long time, like 20 years. And later on, I became the youngest Dan rank holder in Korean traditional archery. And we'd go to various festivals and such, even in the States, and introduce Korean archery to the rest of the world. So there's that. Also, of course, there's one thing that always follows music. My father was big into trumpets, so uh, back when I was in middle school, I was in the marching band, and I played trumpet back then. And my father got that from my grandmother, who was big into trombones. So yeah, music kind of runs in the family. Last but not least, my father, he's very big into Korean history. I think if, he had, if there was a past life, he was a Korean in the Joseon Dynasty. <laughs> he teaches Korean history right now at Yongnam University in English to Koreans. And uh, I would have to say that he's kind of like Indiana Jones to me. He's very adventurous. He's constantly researching, but he's always fun. And this was back. 2007, uh, there was a thing called the Shin Miyamiyo. Have you guys heard of that? I mean, the Koreans here are nodding their heads, right? Right? Okay. That was, that was back in 1871 when the Americans first came to Korea. Uh, in a way, they kind of invaded Korea. They came for trade, so called trade. And it was a battle that lasted for three days. Anyway, my father's been researching that for 15 years. And this flag was one of the flags that was captured by the Americans. It was a uh, you can read the Chinese here, it says, it's Changun Su, which stands for general. It was a general's flag. It was taken by the Americans, and they brought it back in 2007. So it's real big into that. Big into American history as well. 
This is him wearing a Civil War era suit. Yeah. He doesn't look terribly bad in the Korean era, Joseon era suit. Yeah. So yeah, he's a really fun person. And he helped me through getting my, my childhood. Alright, next chord. I'll give you a hint, it starts with F. <laughs> Fun? Fun? Good guess? Challenges in my life. I got it. I graduated from uh, Busan University with my for my master's degree. After that, I came up to the city, and ever since then, I've been living a really free life, playing rock and roll music and everything like that. But really, the topic today is about family and not really about me, so I'm just kind of kind of skip. But just to very briefly talk about what I'm doing in the band. Uh, this is my current band. We're called the Hysterics. And kind of like our name, we are kind of all over the place. Uh, we're a rock and roll band. Incidentally, there are no people, nobody's in their 30s in our band. I'm the only guy in there who's still in his 20s, and everyone else is in their 40s. But we have a lot of fun together. It's gonna skip. And this is down in Busan. And this is a really nice band for me. I wrote almost all of our songs. And I would have to say if it were for my grandfather, my dad, and even my mother who supported me uh, with my music, I would probably would not have made these songs. Last one. Recently, that sadness came in the form of family. Um, being in, I, I was at, there was this one point in my life when I was in Korea for like five years straight, and I didn't get to see my grandparents that much, and they got noticeably older, and in not as good health, but still, every time they saw me, I was just loving the air of course, and uh, we'd always contact by Skype and everything like that. And my grandparents, speaking about family, just like my parents, they really loved each other very much. Uh, I would have to say that I, I've grown, I grew up in the perfect family for me. And uh, both my parents and my grandparents have served as great models in life. And they really loved to wear the bird T-shirts, we have a lot of birds in northern Michigan, a lot of birds, and some of their favorite birds are on this shirt. So back in uh, 2012, uh, December 2012, my grandmother passed away, and shortly after my grandfather passed away, we were. But even in death, they're together. And you see the birds on the tombstone as well. Uh, I was actually in Korea at the time, because it was during the semester, and same for my father. So they were cremated, their ashes were put together, and uh, in June, they were buried together. So they're always together. But you know what? Their funeral was actually a very nice occasion for our family. We got to uh, see old faces, and uh, it was actually a very uplifting point. You'll notice that everyone's wear, everyone has a bow tie on, right? And they're pink. The bow tie, of course, is my grandfather. He loved bow ties. My grandmother loved the color pink. So, there. I'm the only one not wearing pink right now because that's actually a bow tie my grandfather gave me. So, big significance. So, in conclusion, this is kind of my life story. See? Comfort, A minor. Challenge. Freedom and family. Yeah. And you know what? I'm continuing to make all these different chord progressions in my life, and uh, 
Even if you're musically inclined, I encourage you to think about what, what point in life you're currently in. Think outside the box and uh, cherish the moment that you have. And most of all, cherish your family. Thank you.